I didn't know what was happening. He was very, very hard to deal with. There were boatloads of medications. I, there are too many to count. We live in a house that has um, a lot of outside space, a lot of trees, a lot of open ground, and deer are constantly um, eating from our apple trees and the rest. Just when you think you've seen all the medications there are, there are hundreds upon hundreds more than you think. When the kids were young, one of the things we loved to do was rake leaves into big piles and then the kids would jump in them. We don't do that anymore. Everywhere there are ticks, not just high grass, it's low grass. You think when the grass is dead or it's cold outside, the ticks are still there. We don't do outside things, uh, walking in the woods, uh, playing in the yard. That has changed our, our whole use of outside space. They can be there when the temperature is 28 degrees. They can be there at any temperature. They're, you can't get it away from them. So as he was going through mostly his late elementary and middle school years, he was very, very hard to deal with. Mood swings, um, threatening behavior, um, just resistant to any kind of direction or any kind of order. I was incredibly angry all the time. Should we deal with this as a disciplinary problem? Should we deal with this as a medical problem? Should we deal with this as a psychological problem? And we went to any number of, of doctors and consulted. Uh, how should we deal with them? I didn't want to do any of my homework. I didn't want to do anything. Actually, I missed 42 days of school my freshman year of high school just because I just didn't want to wake up for school and I had no motivation at all. I just didn't want to do anything. We went through a dozen different kinds of doctors to figure out how to treat him. Went to the best, one of the best Lyme docs in the entire country, let alone the world. People fly in from all over the world to see this one Lyme doc. Three years, thousands and thousands of dollars, and my son didn't get better. In fact, I thought at times he got worse. And it was the most disheartening, awful experience that anyone could ever imagine when you feel that there's no hope for your child to get better. And they said that everything that I was saying was all in my head. So I didn't know how to react to that. So like, that's not an answer that you would want. I remember one day I found a new treatment that I thought maybe could work. And I went to this woman's house who had offered to share with me how to, um, how to possibly help my son. And I walked in and he was, my son was 13 years old at the time. And I said to her, I have five years until he's 18 years old, five years to get him better, help me, what do I do? And she was the blessing I was looking for. I finally found a treatment that helped my son and then you go to a Lyme disease specialist who specializes in Lyme disease and they know what they're talking about. A few years ago, I was asked to co-author a book um, talking about the success stories of Lyme disease. And I was fortunate enough to have a son who was successfully treated with Lyme, one of the few and far between. The name of the book is called Escaping the Lyme Inferno. My name is Jason Hartman. I'm an osteopathic physician at the Arcana Center for Integrative Medicine, where I practice medical acupuncture and osteopathic manipulative medicine. I've been taking care of Nick for about five years now for his chronic Lyme disease. Uh, during his time that we've been treating him, we've been using a combination of, of manipulation therapies and acupuncture, along with some other Chinese medical techniques like cupping and scraping uh, to get him back to optimum function and optimal 
health. Escaping the Lyme Inferno is a collection of stories about men, women, and children who were struggling to regain their health. Um, everyone in this book had no idea what was wrong with their health. No doctors could figure out what was causing all their symptoms until on their own, everyone figured out that they had Lyme disease. I'm gonna read um, the beginning passage to the book. Call me Karen. Most people give birth to their child once. I had the unfortunate, or should I say fortunate, experience of giving birth to my child twice. The original Nick, up to age 14, was bogged down with physical and emotional challenges that no one could treat. It was a long, slow, downward spiral that included ADHD-type behavior, rages, aches and pains, antisocial behavior, bad grades in school, and unexplained illnesses. Eventually, his behavior escalated to knife grabbing as well as suicidal and homicidal threats. Over the past three and a half years, the new Nick has emerged as a sweet, caring, smart, and social, very social, 17-year-old young man who is applying to colleges. Sometimes it is hard for me to remember his awful days, but the copious notes I took, conversations with friends I remember, and emails from teachers I saved always bring me back to reality. The reality of raising the child that I had no control over, making me feel like a bad parent. Fortunately for the new Nick, he had a mom who was tenacious, looked at things analytically, and would never give up. When I first met Nick, he was a pretty sick kid. Uh, so again, this was five years ago. He came to me with uh, signs and symptoms of attention deficit disorder, uh, depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping, um, uh, trouble concentrating. He was having difficulty in school. Uh, you know, and a lot of these symptoms are typical of, of chronic Lyme and specifically neuro Lyme. Acupuncture is a form of medicine from China that's about 2,000 years old. Uh, there's been a modern revival of it amongst physicians in the United States. We use this technique to uh, unlock the potential of health in our patient. So what we're doing is we're finding areas of blocked energy, and in the case of Lyme disease, we find a lot of these blockages uh, in the brain uh, and in the central nervous system. And what we do is we use tiny needles to affect these blockages and actually create a smooth flow of energy. Another technique that we use is the cupping technique uh, or Chinese cupping. You may have seen this on Michael Phelps during the Olympics. What that does is it increases blood flow to specific areas, uh, to specific nerves. And again, as we're moving this blood, we're increasing uh, lymphatic drainage, which in turn creates a, creates and pro promotes a healthy flow of the immune system through the lymphatic channels. Well, there are probably dozens and dozens and dozens of different kinds of treatments um, that you can use to help relieve the symptoms of Lyme disease. The ones that we found that were very successful, and there was a whole group of families that would get together and talk about our success stories. And the ones we found that were the most successful um, number one is called a Rife machine, which is a radio frequency machine that emits the radio frequencies into your body and literally kills the spirochetes, which is what uh, Lyme disease is, they're spirochetes. Um, another method we used was acupuncture. We used uh, cupping. And over these last five years, he has come a long way. You know, this is a kid who I thought would never even get to college, to be honest and now he's in college getting good grades. He's playing uh, on a college, uh, college tennis team. Let's go, Nick. 